Size matters. It makes a difference. The bigger the better is not entirely correct. The smaller the engine, the lighter the vehicle is. The big engines in vehicles move the way they do because of the size ratio. They can provide a show on the racetrack, be heard on the roads causing heads to turn, or just simply be a fun ride wherever they go. And many manufacturers are building their vehicles in unusual new ways. Check out these new small machines with ridiculously juiced up mega motors. 15 smallest vehicles with powerful engines. West Germany Motorcycle In 1981, this West German bus driver, Andre Watcher, made the world's smallest motorcycles, and as you can see, the various designs are all rideable. There are many systems for classifying types of motorcycles, describing how the motorcycles are put to use, the designer's intent, or some combination of the two. Clearly, this crafty guy was just looking to have a little fun with his perfectly designed mini motorcycles. Six main categories are widely recognized, cruiser, sport, touring, standard, dual purpose, and dirt bike. Strong lines are sometimes drawn between motorcycles and their smaller cousins, mopeds, scooters, and underbones. But other classification schemes include these as types of motorcycles. Do minis count? Probably. There are informal classifications or nicknames used by manufacturers, riders, and the motorcycling media, like a naked bike that stands outside the six usual classes, recognizable only by cosmetic changes. We're thinking tiny versions of these great motorcycles fit in somewhere, don't you agree? They may be small, but these hogs are big fun. <laughs> Moto bag rideable luggage. Hate dragging your carry-on suitcase around the airport? You too can fix this travel peeve with the first motorized smart luggage. The Moto bag, a rideable suitcase, travels at 8 miles an hour with 6 miles on a single charge. You simply ride the suitcase like a mini motorcycle or scooter. Among its advantages as a convenient suitcase are dual USB charging ports, optional GPS tracking, and easy access pockets for items like phones and tablets, as well as a 17-inch zippable sleeve for laptops, for the working jet-setting professional. The lightweight bag, which is 19 pounds and has 2,000 inches of cubic packing space, complies with carry-on regulations. Now you'll have shorter commutes, always know where your stuff is, never miss tight connections, always have a fully charged phone, and never break a sweat. Motobag can resolve all of these everyday scheduling speed bumps that lead to a horrible travel experience and reshape your day into a smooth ride. Who doesn't love that? Featuring the latest in luggage design and advanced motorized technology, it's luggage you can ride. Not only is it incredibly functional and efficient, it's fun. What do you think? I thought that was, that was so cool. The Martin Jetpack The Martin Jetpack generated major buzz in the aviation and recreational vehicle world. Initially, commercial demand saw the research and development program focus on readying the product for use in emergency response, defense and recreation, and so on. But how does it work? It uses a gasoline engine with two ducted fans to provide lift. It was specified to have a maximum speed of 25 miles per hour, a flight ceiling of 2,500 feet, a range of 9.5 to 12.5 miles, and endurance of about 28-minute flights. It can also carry over 400 pounds. The first customers were hoped to be first responders. The Martin Jetpack had various advantages over a lightweight helicopter, a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that can either be flown by a person or operated unmanned. In case of disasters, the Jetpack could be used to fly rescuers to areas where helicopters and planes can't get to. The operating costs are hugely lower. Compared to helicopters currently used for urban surveillance and search and rescue work, the Jetpack's hourly operated costs will be around 90% cheaper. However, in 2019, the company closed. So it's only a matter of time before there's another attempt. <laughs> Surefly Personal Flying Drone It resembles a giant drone, sort of. Some would call it a helicopter due to its familiar egg-shaped fuselage, landing skids, and rotors. The stylish new flying vehicle certainly looks fantastic, right? Surefly created a hybrid electric multi-copter with an octo-quad layout of four arms and eight rotors. 
At the core of the Surefly personal flying drone is an integral combustion pistol engine driving dual generators to provide power to the eight motors. Four lithium battery packs provide backup power. Is the new Surefly a giant drone or the future of helicopters? The company has confidence you'll love them, allowing them to take $1,000 refundable deposits so you can have your own. The Surefly creators were busy on several fronts, including its new electric delivery trucks and the Horsefly drones that are sadly drones named after a company with horse in the name and do not resemble a horse fly. But who cares? The sci-fi obsessed engineer and all of us needs to believe in the idea of futuristic personal flight vehicles. 1960 GoGo Mobile Dart Again, with these mini masterpieces, the GoGo Mobile Dart was a microcar which was developed in Australia and featured a fiberglass two-seater open sports car body with outdoors. It weighed in at only 761 pounds. The Dart was designed in 1958 and went on sale the following year with around 700 examples produced up to the time that production ceased in 1961. A 2019 documentary called The Art about an artist who paints paper planes on the GoGo Mobile Dart as the canvas also memorialized this classic car. The movie was received with positive reviews too. It was certainly unique, no doors, hinged seats that pull up and back to allow easier access and barely weatherproof. But The Dart was a sensation gathering rave reviews in the period. Today, it's thought that perhaps only 100 survive, making the Dart a very rare and collectible microcar in its own right. But more importantly, it's a true icon of Australian motoring. We totally get why it garnered so much attention. It's so cool. Not practical, but still very cool. Certainly a work of art. <laughs> Ehang-184 You remember the Ehang-184 autonomous passenger drone? It's a showstopper. More than 1,000 test flights were conducted, and storm force winds and low visibility at night and 1,000 feet above the ground. By 2018, 30 to 40 single pilot Ehang 184 had been built. So naturally, to stump any naysayers, watch the first ever footage showing the 184 whisking actual human beings into the great blue yonder. Some 40 passengers were filmed enjoying their aerial excursions including the deputy mayor of Guangzhou as well as putting his courage where his money is, Ehang founder and CEO Hua Zihu. Though the footage shows the drone coping with clear and foggy conditions during flight, according to the manufacturer, the 184 series is capable of carrying a single person and in for seven typhoon conditions. In 2016 in Las Vegas, Ehang, a company best known for its ghost drone quadcopter, stated its self-navigating craft will cost between $200,000 and $300,000 and be capable of carrying single passengers for 23 minutes on a single charge. Guys, how there are eight propellers. They're very long and sleek, and each one of them are around 1.6 meters. <laughs> Mazda AutoZam AZ-1 the AutoZam AZ-1 is a mid-engine sports car originally created as a cheap, compact way to get the Japanese population mobile after World War II. The mid-engine, gullwing door AutoZam AZ-1, though, comes from a slightly different time. In the late 80s, Japan was going through an economic boom. Japanese automakers were flush with cash and able to fund high-dollar projects. And during this time, the creators wanted to make cars that were genuinely sporty. Mazda then took over the project and created three additional concepts, picking one to develop further. The car would be sold under Mazda's AutoZam division, think Lexus, but for Mazda. Thus, in 1992, the AutoZam AZ-1 debuted for the Japanese market. The AZ-1 was sold with the catchphrase Ultimate Handling Machine. Sweet, right? It's a racing car for the public road with minimum interior decoration which perhaps explains the quite obsessive culture that surrounds these cars. The Aero X-Bike They say that this vehicle rises 10 feet from the ground and can travel at 45 miles per hour and runs for around 75 minutes on a full tank of fuel. However, the Aero X does not fly with the same energy efficiency as a helicopter due to its rotor blades being shorter, but it is much smaller in size and safer near humans. The vehicle was in development since 2008 and was originally planned for use by one person or as an unmanned drone. To achieve this, Aerofex added two control bars 
which the rider can access at knee level and easily lean to one side or the other to balance the craft. Easy, right? The price was given at a reasonable 85 grand. The planned usage includes agricultural field work, delivering materials in rough terrain, and for search and rescue vehicles, and delivering food too, we hope. In December 2017, Aerofex received a second international patent in Japan, which will allow Aerofex unmanned vehicles to spray crops. What other creative ways can we use this amazing vehicle? Envy The Envy is a two-seat urban electric car jointly developed by Segway and General Motors that can be driven normally or operated autonomously. It can detect and avoid obstacles, park themselves, and come to you when called by your phone. However, unlike on a Segway, where the rider controls forwards and backwards movement of the vehicle using just his balance interpreted by a series of gyroscopic sensors, the Envy's driver sits normally using a bi-wire steering system, hand-operated accelerator and brake. It can drive you 10 miles to work, drive itself home again to charge, and be back to collect you at 6 p.m. Thanks to its vehicle-to-network connectivity, you could even work while it drove you home. The Envy's vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication system also means that it could adjust its route to work on the strength of traffic information supplied by another Envy stuck in traffic further down the road. Alternatively, it could platoon with other Envy's, which means drive in an automatically governed close convoy to reduce drag and save energy. Now that's a win-win. Folder Mobile Microcars Foldemobile is the name of a series of small cars produced in Germany between 1950 and 1969. The car's original design was conceived by Norbert Stevenson, a freelance journalist. As with many others involved in the field of automotive design, Stevenson had little in the way of formal qualifications in this area, although he had completed one term of mechanical engineering in Berlin. His design concept was for a very simple three-wheeled car with room for two people inside. It would have two wheels at the front for stability and be driven by a small engine at the rear. Though overall numbers produced were relatively small, the cars attracted sufficient attention to see licensed construction on four continents, including Europe. In its ultimate configuration, it's said to have inspired the term bubble car. It's acknowledged as the first car in the world to feature a negative scrub radius, now recognized as a major advance in driving safety. And it's freaking cool! The Rhino Microcycle Years ago, engineer Chris Hoffman was driving with his daughter Lauren when she said, Daddy, I've been thinking about this one-wheeled motorcycle I saw in a video game. Could you actually build something like that? And he did. Meet the Rhino, one-wheeled, electric-powered, capable of operating at speeds of up to 10 miles per hour. Rhino relies on the same balance technology as other electronically stabilized products like remote-controlled helicopters, jet planes, and spaceships. As the bike leans forward, the motors drive the wheel under the rider to keep the bike in balance. To accelerate, the rider simply pushes down on the handlebar with enough force to prevent the tilt angle from coming back to zero. Side to side, the Rhino steers like a conventional motorcycle for balance. The Rhino rider sits more upright than the rider of a typical street-oriented sport bike, allowing them to more quickly and easily pull back and slow the bike down. But no matter how fast you're moving, you'll be as comfortable on the Rhino as you are on your own two feet. Sea Do Spark Regular old jet skis have become so gigantic, powerful, expensive, and fuel-hungry. However, Sea-Doo is starting to turn that around, though, with the Spark. And as you can see, it looks like endless weekends of wonderful, watery fun. Affordable, too. Half the price, half the weight, and half the power of a regular mid-range jet ski. The Spark delivers 90% of the fun of a more expensive water toy in a way that's much more accessible and attractive to newcomers, and burns nearly 10 times less fuel than the big boys in the Sea-Doo world. You can use it to tow a wakeboard or carry one or two passengers, but it's probably strongest as a solo fun machine. It's genuinely half the price of a mid-range ski, meaning you can buy two, stick them up on a double trailer, and make it a social outing. Listen to your music in or off the water with this fully submersible and removable audio system. Loaded with two 25-watt speakers with Bluetooth connectivity and up to 24 hours of battery life, nothing like some sweet sounds as you soak in the rays on the water. 
Outrider USA Adventure Vehicles. Outrider USA got a call from Chris Winter after losing the use of his limbs during a car accident. He wondered if Outrider USA would collaborate on a bike for people with limited mobility. They started a crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter and discovered that there was a tremendous demand for adaptive adventure vehicles. These machines are designed to fit through a doorway and charge off a standard electrical outlet, custom built to customer specifications for optimum comfort and usability. The goal was to make a machine that supports riders anywhere on the spectrum, from a quadriplegic rider with a negligible hand function to an older cyclist with high blood pressure. They are exceptional exercise machines that make it possible for riders of all ages and abilities to get out and ride together. The beauty of electric assist in a lightweight application is that it levels the playing field. An outrider allows you to tackle hills and inclines with ease and to keep up with friends in traffic. The Beaver Submarine The Beaver was a tiny submarine from the Second World War, the smallest submarines in the German Navy. Following Black May in 1943, Germany was losing submarines faster than it could replace them. Midget submarines could be built quickly and cheaply, required just one operator and were almost impossible to detect. The Beaver was hastily developed, which resulted in basic technical flaws that, combined with the inadequate training, meant they never posed a real threat, despite 324 submarines being delivered. Improvements included the addition of a periscope, but it was forward mounted with only 40 degrees of vision, so the operator had no idea what was behind him before surfacing. They were almost impossible to operate as periscope depth anyway, so torpedoes had to be launched while surfaced. To make matters worse, there were two occasions when the Beaver's externally mounted torpedoes were accidentally fired in dock, destroying 25 submarines. Whoops. <laughs> Fiat 600 Jolly The Fiat 600 is a rear-engine city car manufactured by Fiat from 1955 to 1969 and was priced the equivalent of $7,300 US dollars in today's money. The precise origin of the species is mired in conjecture, but what is clear is that the Jolly in all its many flavors was once the darling of the rich and famous. And why not, right? Scroll back to the late 50s and early 60s and no yacht was complete without a beach car waiting on the quayside or even on board. This was the type of runabout owned by the beautiful people and the brainchild of playboy industrialist Gianni Agnelli. According to legend, he wanted a car that would serve as a land tender but also fit on the back of his 82-foot boat as he cruised the Mediterranean. Where the rake of the Riviera led, the style conscious invariably followed and thus the Jolly was born. The 600 Jolly was offered for US consumption at roughly the same cost as a new Corvette. But make sure before you drive off, check the weather forecast first. Those were 15 of the smallest vehicles with powerful engines, part 2. Thanks for watching.